morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you, and welcome once again to the Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, we like to say it best by saying happy Sabbath to everyone, and we thank you for being with us. I'm Pastor Michael Dyson, and I welcome you here to our church. I welcome you here, even though the pews are empty as they have been uh, for a few weeks, but the spirit of the living God is here. And wherever you are today, whether you are resting at home in your bed, in your pajamas, or whether you're at your table having had morning devotions, God bless you. Just happy to have you here in the place. Happy to have you with us. And reminding you that 2020, even though it's had its ups and downs, we're still communicating with one another. Uh, we're communicating uh, with our, our regular Sabbath school, our prayer services, uh, by using not only Facebook and YouTube as social media, uh, we're also connecting on our phone line. Uh, the number is on the screen, 563-999-2090. Uh, and then the code is 435-402. Uh, this year is off to a rousing start. Of course, we're combating the uh, terrible pandemic that's impacted all of us. And we're doing our best. We're staying true to the requirements of uh, keeping our social distancing and certainly wear masks and gloves and all those things that you have to do as well uh, as we move forward. But we're going to praise his name on whatever media we can on the YouTube, as I've mentioned, and certainly uh, with you here on Facebook. Uh, we're just uh, lifting up his name and continuing to share a way of communicating. 2020, even though it's been rough thus far, it is still a year where we are looking for Jesus. And to do that, we need to be ready for Jesus when he comes, and that's what we're looking to do. And so here in this place, we have our prayer ministry, which begins early in the morning, uh, every Sabbath morning, every Saturday morning. Uh, and they're doing so now on the phone. And they've done that this morning, beginning at 845, followed by our Sabbath school, and then even our spiritual growth, which will be this afternoon at 4 p.m. So you want to stay with us all day long. What a wonderful opportunity to praise his name. Every day at 12 noon, uh, Monday through Friday, we come on the phone line and we just want to hear, first of all, we want to hear from God, but we want to hear each other's voices and know that everyone is doing okay. And to do that, we're using the same uh, line as we use for our prayer line, as we use for Sabbath school, as we use even for today for you to hear the message. And so we ask you to join us during the week. You don't have to come on every day. But 12 noon, just come on and give a praise report. Send up a prayer request. Pray for those who are impacted the most. Pray for us as a world. We need every prayer to go up to this God of ours to let him know that we are still hanging on, still trusting, still have faith in him. God has been good. These last few weeks have been powerful for us. Uh, these last few weeks have allowed us to share uh, over this medium, taking the time with this pandemic, uh, asking through prayer that this God of heaven be closer to us here on earth. And so we've done a Daniel and Revelation experience, and it has been awesome. I'm so thankful for my colleague and friend, Pastor Charlie Jenkins, who uh, brought a wonderful uh, presentation of the book of Revelation and I thank the Lord for giving us the insight in the book of Daniel. Uh, we were able to see the last time prophecies of earth and also able to see that this God, this God of heaven is wanting to communicate with us. So share the number that's on the screen. Let people know that we're on the air uh, and we have some things coming up. But we asked, what's, what's the head? What's, what's the next step? Because so many have said they've been enjoying the 3 p.m. every day on the Daniel Revelation Seminar, and we don't want to just stop now. And so I've got with my director, our elder, Elder Thomas, and I've talked to Pastor Jenkins and others, and I've had wonderful training and experience uh, with Amazing Facts, even Media Ministry, as well as Andrews University. Uh, we're going to move forward in using the study guides, using the study guides uh, that Amazing Facts Media Ministry has. And we're going to start a series on that. We're going to light the world up with that. Uh, the lessons are there. Uh, we're able to go through. We're looking to do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, this is the beginning of the planning of it, everybody. So we need your prayers on how we can put it together. And we know that the Lord will bless us.
we know that you'll be a part of us. We thank you for being loyal uh, to the program, loyal to the task. Now let's continue to share this wonderful message with the world. And we want you to still be a part of us. So pray that we complete the planning, uh, that we put everything in place. We probably will not be here in the church. Uh, I'll probably have to do it from my home. Uh, but with your blessings and with your prayers, it will be a tremendous effort of bringing the kingdom closer to us. So God bless you on this Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you, everybody. Uh, let's worship him today in spirit and in truth. God bless. The world needs to know about this. We set our work aside. We leave our cares behind. We leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath rest. It's the holy day, a memorial to creation. On this show. Come on, everybody. Sabbath rest. Holy rest. On the day he set aside. Hallowed, blessed, and sanctified. Sabbath rest. Holy rest. wonderful message sabbath rest is my favorite song and i know it's yours too and those from sharon we miss singing it together we miss worshiping him together in this space but we learned a long time ago that this is not the church we are and so wherever you are today uh, this is still the best day it is still the time that the lord has set aside on his day and we just thank you for being with us as we worship him i hope you've got your bibles with you uh, because our, our, our testimony, our, uh, our faith is based on the word of God. And so John 3, 16 and 17 is the words that share with you what we believe in. And John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, John 3, 17 says, For God set not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's our affirmation of faith, everybody. And then God reminds us through Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, and it says this, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast oh praise God praise his holy name we lift his name even in the midst of the storm because we understand the storms we understand that people are either in one of or one of three or four or whatever it may be phases of a storm we've we've heard that sometimes that there are those who are in the midst of the storm waiting for the clouds to lift and then there are those who've come out of a storm today the, sun is shining brightly for the first time in a long while and so we're even praying today for those who don't see the storm clouds up ahead and that a storm may be on your horizon but whatever phase of the storm there is we've got a God who will be with us he's shown that he even has the confidence to sleep in the boat and as long as Jesus is in the boat uh, we can make it safely through the storm today there have been so many who have been impacted by this virus it's touched us here as well so we join with those who are mourning today. We join with those who are prayerful and hopeful of loved ones who have been impacted by this terrible virus and are fighting for their lives. We ask the Lord to give them every opportunity, every weapon from heaven to fight and stay strong, to come through on the other side. But even if this 
is not so, and even if this illness leads unto death, we still have the victory because we have a God who has the keys. And he'll honor those who have died in him. We've heard it. You've heard it through the series. First Thessalonians tells us that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we, which are alive and remain, will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So we pray today for every facet of this country, this world. We pray today for those who are seeking the master. So join with me as we call upon heaven. Father in heaven, here we are once again. You called us to this place. There is something special about this time that we have with you. Those who understand that our demonstration of love for you is to follow the commands that you've given us. And so Lord, right there in the heart of the commands, right there in the heart of your love for us, you've told us to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days to labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God. And you've said in it, thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, or nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is. And then he rested. Today is a day of rest. Rest in the assurance of a God who has the ability to bring us through. Rest in the assurance of a God that is with us in the midst of the flames. Rest in the assurance that we have a Savior who loves us and has gone to prepare a place for us. Rest in the ability that there are, are like-minded Christians all over the globe who are lifting up the name of Jesus today. And we stand with them. Lord, we celebrate it this week of a risen Savior. And we know he's in the world today. We join those who have celebrated the empty tomb. But uh, Lord, we also celebrate the creating God because if he can create, he can recreate. And therefore, Lord, whatever is lost during this time, whatever is taken away, he is a restoring God as well. So, Lord, we ask you to come close to those that are suffering. We ask you to caress loved ones who have lost dear members of their family during this time and not being able to, 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 to say goodbye in the regular ways that we're used to. And even though we don't live like the world, even though we don't, don't, don't laugh like the world, uh, even though we don't die like the world, uh, we still experience sorrow. Even the word of God says there's a time for everything. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this ability to come and be in your presence. We thank you for this special time of worship. And so, Lord, wherever the family is scattered at this time. Lord, about this time, the walls are starting to press in on many. and ask the question, how long? Only you, Lord, can renew their strength in the midst of this battle. So we ask you to do that this morning. We ask you to come by here. And Lord, even though many are calling your name, while on others thou art calling, please, please, please don't pass us by. So we come, in Jesus' holy name we come. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Second Chronicles 714, you know we've been saying it. Second Chronicles 714, if my people who are called by my name. You know I love to say it, that's God's peeps. If you're one of God's peeps, if you're one of his, he's given us our command while he's paused the world. He's told us that we need to humble ourselves and continue to pray. And if there's any wicked ways in us, Lord, take it away. 
He's told us to turn from that. And then he's promised to forgive our sins and even to heal our land. That's the God we serve. That's the God I love. I know that's the God you love too. Wherever you are, I know you love him. Praise God for you. Praise God wherever you are. Those that are still even on their knees praying right now. Praise God for you. God bless you. He hears you. He hears your prayers. And so we come. The next thing out of worship is always service. Because the more you know about him, the more you want to do for him. And so we give of ourselves. We don't have much. We sing as the others sing. We give ourselves away, Lord. It's all we got. And so we give our tithe and our offering as a, as a gift. We offer it up to you, Lord. And we offer it up to you because you gave first. And so, Lord, here at Sharon, we have different ways for people to give. Even those that are online that are not a part of the Sharon family, uh, you can return your offering, your tithe to the Lord as well. You can be God-giving. And we've made it simple. We've got a text. You can text it in to uh, Sharon SDA at 77977. And we've made it easy. You can give at any time, anywhere, anyway. Uh, we praise that uh, the Lord has blessed you. Maybe you have been blessed with uh, some uh, extra income this week. Uh, just remember uh, what the Lord has done for you. And give as you believe, because God loves a cheerful giver. And we've made ways here at the church for our church family to drop off between 12 and 2 on Sabbath. Our head deacon is in place. And we have a table outside, not only to receive, but we have a table outside to give. There's bread on the table. It's been on the table each week. Uh, there are some extra little gifts if you if you need rice or beans and whatever they have they have it on the table outside they got their mask on their gloves on and cars are going up and down the street and people stop and they receive their blessing we've also made it so Wednesday evening is an opportunity for you church members you know what we're talking about between 11 and 1 if you'll come by and just stay true to the word of God and be obedient to him and for whatever you do, whatever you give, give with a cheerful heart. And we simply say, thank you. And we say, thank you. I want to introduce today a friend, first and foremost, but a warrior for a God who's been on the battlefield for a long time, serving this God. And I love him. I love his message. He, he's an urban warrior. Not everybody can fight urban warfare. Some of you are, are better off in the countryside where there are where not, not many people. But uh, that, that urban battle is something different. At every level, there's another devil. And you've got to be able to come in the power of the living God. And the, the preacher that we have for today is one that is familiar with the battle. And, and even more so, the enemy has been familiar with him and knows that he comes in the name of the Lord. And so after we have special music from our music ministry leader, uh, Stephen, the next voice you'll hear after that is that our speaker of the day, uh, pastor retired, there's no retirement plan on this side of the kingdom. <laughs> Elder Ron Edmonds will be with us today and is going to bring a wonderful word today on this Sabbath as we hear the music from our music ministry leader. God bless. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tear through there not another has ever he knows my name yeah yeah said he knows my name and he knows my name and I am his own Ooh. 
morning and a blessed Sabbath to all of our listeners, whether you are sitting on your couch in your chair or even still relaxed in your beds, we still praise God. We praise him when we get up. We praise him when we lay down. We praise him when we move about. There is no special position that we cling to anytime, anywhere, we give God praise and thanks because he is so good to us. And for many of you in the midst of this pandemic, I can understand some of your feelings. It's, it's different. It's not the norm. And I've heard a lot of questions as to what in the world do we do? I'm, I'm going stare crazy. I'm, I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. Well, I, I, I hope that that will not be the case. This is a wonderful opportunity moment that God has allowed even through this critical time around the world. Now is a great time for families to reconcile, to make amends. Now is a great time for husbands and wives and relatives and friends to settle differences, get closer, love more. We need not be bored. Study the word, read the word, take a walk, pray. Prior to the entrance of this pandemic, we were doing whatever it was we did and not giving a second thought, but now we have time to think. And I would encourage each one of you, wherever you are right now, and however you're listening, to take advantage of this quiet time, this well-designed time, and get to know your Savior. There are worse times coming, but God has, in his mercy, given us this opportunity to get some things right, make some things better. I am so honored to be able to bring a word today I am blessed to be able to rise from my bed this morning. And I'm telling you, I am so grateful for the technology that we have and trying to take advantage of every aspect of it has been my theme. Wanting to give more Bible studies. Great opportunity on the phone or via whatever uh, social media platform you want to use. Just a few days ago, my relatives thought it was time to have a prayer meeting with the family and ask me to lead out. There's so many wonderful things can be done and not feel bored and overwhelmed. Now is the time to 
to strengthen your faith. Now is the time to strengthen your relationship with your Lord. And so let's do that. All of my brothers and my sisters, find yourself a corner, find yourself a, a space, and talk to the Lord about your life. If he were to come today, would he take you or would he leave you? So you see, we can do a number of things with this time we have, and I pray that you will do that and not become bored and overwhelmed. But rejoice right where you are. I really don't need a, a group to get my shout on. Just thinking of the wonderful things that he does for me on a regular basis makes me want to shout anywhere, anytime. And so today is no different. And so I encourage you to read the word more, pray more. Get to know each other better so that when we come through this, we'll be better for it. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, we want to take a look at the 24th chapter of Matthew. And I particularly want to zero in on uh, verse 14. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. The prophecies had foretold that he was coming for centuries, but Israel ignored the warnings, worshipped other gods, played the fool with ungodly people, and now on the brink of eternity gain or loss, they find themselves immersed in the traditions and rituals perpetuated by the priest and religious leaders of the day. Yes, these have been challenging times for which we have been living in the last few weeks, last few months, but all is not lost. The Bible in the 24th chapter of Matthew tells us that these kinds of things are going to take place. They are going to come on the earth. The Bible tells us that pestilences is what we kind of correlate this COVID-19 virus as will come. But there is much more to come. So why has it come now? What, what is this really all about? Well, I'll tell you from my perspective, I believe that God in his mercy is allowing us to take advantage of these opportunities, of these hours that we have, not doing an awful lot, save those, of course, who may be working uh, at home for, uh, or, or doing other things, but this is indeed an opportunity that God is giving every man, woman, boy, and girl a chance to tighten up their relationship with him, to make sure that their spiritual life is strong because some real evil days are coming in. And for every city dweller, who is pressed on every side by the cares of city life, I'm saying to you, now is the time for you to reevaluate your relationship with your Lord. Listen, I know that there's a lot of talk by spiritual leaders and religious people all over the world about uh, this good thing and that good thing, but I'm here to tell you today, not to lose sight of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, for he is indeed the panacea, not only for my sinful problems, but he is the panacea for this pandemic that has taken the world by storm. And we must never forget 
that our hope lies within Jesus. And so, as I think about what's going on in America now, 45 not sure as to what to do and using the public platform to push his agenda so that he can be re-elected. What I would suggest to every politician is that you yourselves take advantage of this opportunity and make sure that you are secure with your Lord because when he comes and he is coming as is predicted by Matthew 24, he is coming and when he comes, he's coming looking for people who have been faithful to him. We must not allow our jobs and circumstances to circumvent the overwhelming power of God that wants to embrace us. And so, America, this pandemic is a message to you. I'm afraid that my country has become a little pompous and arrogant in her disposition and using such superlatives to describe her as the greatest nation in the world and the most powerful nation in the world. Well, it seems to me every nation has taken a knee uh, to the COVID-19 virus. Now who do we call? And it's very interesting, my brothers and my sisters, that when man can't figure out what to do, he finds himself at some point in time whether on a long term or briefly, calling on the name of the Lord. And when you call on the name of the Lord, he will answer. God has not forgotten you. And for those of you whose faith has been shaken by all of this, uh, maybe because you can't get to a building of worship, maybe you, 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 you can't do the kinds of things that you are accustomed to doing the way you are accustomed to doing them. Let me say something to you, my brother, my sister, uh, boys and girls, please know and understand that the Lord is allowing all of this so that you can get to know him better and understand the times. Now is an opportunity to study the word, to get familiar with the word as we're living in these last days, as we are really living uh, in, 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 this, in, in this experience of, of COVID-19. We, we are right in the midst of this prophetic word. We, we, we can see it. We, we are experiencing it. So don't don't, don't grow weary and do not become discouraged because God says he is going to deliver us but not yet there are yet some things to come in the meantime you still need to be uh, very careful and, and doing all of the things that the uh, health professionals are telling you to do and there are some who are reckoning this as an act of of, of of, of, of faith, uh, that, that the country is in imposing rules on, on their religious practice and belief. No, it has nothing to do with that. This has everything to do with your health and concerns because if you really understand it truly, the church is not the building, the church is me. So God has visited his chosen people throughout the ages as a reminder of his great love for them but they weren't having it. The fullness of time had come when Messiah was to make his debut uh, to reacquaint his chosen with the sea opening, desert catering, awning from the sun by day and bonfire at night, Pharaoh checking God and who he was. Through their disobedience, they forgot who they were and the purpose for their existence while the world looked on. The Israel of God were chosen to teach the world about the creator of the universe, to point to the savior of fallen man and to lift up the son of the living God, but they did not. 
He had just finished the triumphal entry. He'd received the accolades and praises and shouts of approval from the sick he had healed, from the lame whose legs he made to walk, uh, and the shouts of hosannas from the uh, once muted tongues that spoke that day. He had just experienced this grand celebration because the people of God, because they had not paid attention to the prophecies, paid attention to the times, were now getting all excited that Jesus was going to become king and remove them from the yoke of oppression of Rome. But it wasn't about that. That's not why he was coming. God would never use his power to suppress another in order to reveal himself because he's a God of love. And so, as he is now standing on the pinnacle steps of the, of the temple, teaching and sharing, for this very last time. Here is the high priest standing talking to the priest and rabbis about the things that have just taken place and who he really is. He's about to make one last move because he now sees in just a few hours his march toward Golgotha. God comes now to live with them, walk and talk with them, to show them hands on how to navigate their way out of the sinful state for which they live is rejected. The last train leaving the depot is missed. The fight to eternity canceled. The fumbled chance to get it right is now gone. Israel is in need of a savior, not a souvenir. They need faith, not fury. They need hope, not hype. They needed Jesus to right the sinking ship. Because of their disobedience and mingling with the heathens, they had been tossed into the closet of lost and found. They needed to be cleansed from their sins. They needed to find their way back to God. They needed to see beyond their circumstances. They needed to see beyond the heavy hand of Roman oppression. They needed some good news. So Jesus came to deliver that good news. If you, he says, if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And so they continue to journey. 400 feet above the pinnacle of the temple, they would climb to the Mount of Olives. And while Jesus had made his move coming away from the temple, he pointed to this uh, beautiful, awesome edifice and said, you know, one day, not one stone is going to be left on another. And these couple of disciples that were with him looked with amazement and marveled and were just totally confused. How is it that this could be? Some of those stones were uh, three feet by five feet. It's so large that it would just seem impossible that they could become a heap of rubble. But Jesus was prophesying a time that would come because his people were not paying attention to the voice of the Lord. They were not obeying the voice of the Lord. They were rejecting their Savior. They were turning their backs on their last hope. This indeed was the last train to glory for the people of God. And so Jesus continues his journey and as they are about to crest the mound of, 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 of the Mount of Olives, he looks over and he begins to talk to them about things to come. He begins to talk to them about the wars and the rumors of wars and the various devastating things that would come upon the earth. 
And so the disciples, because they had been so befuddled by what he had said about the temple, because the temple was the, was the glory of Israel. They had given so much attention and time and energy to the temple that they had forgotten about the temple dweller. They had forgotten about the one who was indeed in past times the Shekinah glory. They had forgotten about the one that made water come out of a dry rock. They had forgotten about the one that had made a highway through the sea. They had forgotten about the one who had allowed them to walk through the desert for 40 years and not wearing out clothes or shoes. They had forgotten all of these things and so this gospel, this good news now that's come to them in the person of God himself to remind them that they are still his people but you have to receive the Son of the living God in order for you to, uh, to receive and to, and to get the freedom that you desire. You want the freedom uh, uh, that you think you, you, you deserve now because of what you're feeling uh, f from the, the, the leaders of Rome and, and from the rulers of Rome. But that's not what you really want. Jesus could have come and topple uh, the Roman Empire, but it was not about toppling the Roman Empire. It was about building strength in the heart of the believer, faith and trust in the living and true God. And so, I am reminded of the power of the, of the word that Jesus was. And so as he has come, please know and understand that he is that gospel. The life he lived for those 33 years, and particularly those last three years, was the good news. His, his demonstrations of care and love for those who were sick and afflicted. He, he did those things so that they could see how God was, because they had forgotten. He did those things uh, 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 because uh, man needs uh, a show and tell. We soon forget the victories that we had yesterday, moving on to something else, not imbibing or allowing them to saturate our souls. And so Jesus himself, the creator, the one who said, let there be, came to Israel to show them the way back to God. And as disturbed as the disciples were, He had their attention. I'm just wondering if God has your attention. Now, some of you have experienced the loss of loved ones because of this virus. And some of you are solely afraid to make a move, to go outside, to do almost anything. And I understand that. But now it's time for us to strengthen our faith and trust that God will care for us even in difficult times like this. And brothers and sisters, once again, these times are going to get worse. There are some much worse things that are coming to this earth. We haven't seen anything yet. So in this season where things are not as bad as they could be is a time when we need to reconnect with God. Some of you have not been to church in a long time. Some of you have not prayed in a long time. Some of you have not read the word in a long time. Some of you have not shouted the words of God in a praiseworthy manner in a long time. But now your attention is being drawn to God because of fear of dying. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, yes, you need to be drawn some kind of way, but please do not fear because God will take care of you, whether in death or whether you live. When you're in Christ, it's going to be all right because we know that after a while, all of these 
these things will pass. Jesus will come and there will be no more sicknesses, no more viruses, no more pandemics. But you got to hold on and trust now. Their minds were so absorbed with what Jesus said that they had climbed about 400 feet above the city of the Mount Olives that they paid very little attention to the steep climb. So Jesus continues to tell them the things that will take place uh, in the not too distant future. Still befuddled, they ask, when will these things happen? And one of the first things Jesus says is, please do not be deceived. Oh, now is a time as you are looking and surfing the internet, you see all kinds of strange sayings by supposedly religious people taking advantage of, 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 of the frightened hearts and of, of, of people, brothers and sisters, there is no need for you to go there when you put your trust in God. There is no fear, there is no enemy that can overwhelm you. He said, I would be with you through the flood. I would take you through the fire and it would not burn you. Yeah, I will protect you. And we must believe it. It's our only hope. And so, this gospel, this gospel, this Jesus who lived, this Jesus who loved, this Jesus who healed, this Jesus who delivered, this Jesus who picked them up, this Jesus who fed them, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. I would that you would walk with me just for a few moments as we take a look through history of how the gospel has been presented even up until the time when the gospel showed up. Remember the exodus, a symbol, sign of the power, presence, and salvation of God. It is time for us to make an exodus from those things that are not godlike, from those things that have caused us to fail in our relationship with one another, those things that have caused us to have wide gaps between us. It's time for an exodus. And this gospel, I'm reminded of Jericho, the symbol and sign of the presence and power and assurance of God's grace, mercy, and hope. The walls of false security outside of God will fall. Walls of fear and hopelessness will fall. This gospel of the kingdom and all of these types of Christ and all of these illustrative uh, demonstrations that God used in times past would come in handy in a time of great need when God's people have been sloped under the heavy load of sin and degradation. And Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 verses 7 through 9, we now have this light shining in our hearts. But, ourselves, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, oh, be it far from your minds and your hearts to believe that we are, uh, this is it for us, uh, uh, that th there is no hope for us. There is more hope now than there's ever been. I am told that when things get really bad, Jesus is closest and nearest to us. So take heart and know that God has not forsaken us nor has he abandoned us. This gospel, while the 
disciples were trying to grasp all that Jesus was saying. Jesus had to hold back because they weren't able to stand all of the things that were about to come upon them. And of course, you know, in AD 70, when Jerusalem was toppled and the, and then the walls of, of the temple were, were heaped one upon another, just as he had prophesied, there were some even worse and darker days to come where God's church would be in deep trouble, but God would never leave them. He was always there protecting and shielding and, 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 and sheltering them. And just as he is doing now. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, Paul says. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And then I am reminded as I'm thinking about this gospel being preached into all the world, this gospel reached back to the portals and, the, and, and to, the, to, to, to the, the governing halls of Esther. The death decree that had been orchestrated by an evil mind to punish the people of God. But this happened because 700 years prior to that, they didn't do what God told them. Kill everybody. Take them all out. When you disobey God, it's going to come back. But God still, even in his mercy, raised up himself and Esther. And this gospel, if I perish, I perish. This gospel no matter what I'm going on, this gospel, I'm going to follow Jesus even unto death. This gospel, even though they slay me, yet will I serve and trust him. This gospel, this is the good news that Jesus came to bring up people who had left him, who had, who had pushed him to the side, who had kicked him to the curve. Let that not be us today. And then there was David and Goliath. This gospel. Well, Edmonds, what, 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 what this gospel in David and Goliath? Gospel is good news. The good news was there was a little boy who was willing to fight the giant. And I'm saying to you today that there are still little boys. There's still those who are yet young in the faith. They are young in their spiritual maturity. But they have great faith and trust God no matter what. David and Goliath reveals the presence, power, and deliverance by the hand of God, you serve no man, no matter how powerful or how strong or how threatening. And even though 45 is putting his signature on checks to try to make simple people think that he's really giving them the money so he can get back in office, don't you fall for the okie doke There are all kinds of deceptive things that are, are coming, but you can get past that by putting your trust in God. Fear not, he says, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And finally, and finally, this gospel, through the experience and life of Hosea, and for many of you, we've had many a conversation as to why in the world would God do such a thing. Well, that whole experience and story of Hosea is really just how we are. We commit spiritual adultery against God. We choose for ourselves other gods. And some of you may not have some kind of a trinket, but it may be something in your heart and in your mind. It may be a person. It may be your job. It, it, it may be your car. I don't know. But if God is not getting the kind of attention that whatever it is that you love to pet is, it means that you have chosen yourself another God. Some of us like to think and believe that these kinds 
kinds of things uh, are way back in Bible days. Uh, we are living in Bible days. The Bible is still in tow. The Bible is still ruling. The Bible is still the word of God. And so we are doing the same kinds of things by taking into ourselves other gods because we want some comfort. I want to feel good. I want to look better and spending all kinds of money and time in areas and on things that has nothing to do with the strength of your faith in a Jesus who can save you. And so Hosea, this gospel, the good news was no matter what you do, I still love you. No matter where you go, I'll still love you. No matter how many times I have to keep coming to get you, I still love you. This is the kind of love that God says he has for us. And for those of you who feel that you have lucked out on God, let me tell you something. You can never push yourself too far from a loving God. You can never put a wall so thick between you and God that he cannot reach you. God loves you no matter what your mess is, what your situation is. No matter. This gospel. This is the gospel that Jesus came to preach. A gospel of a loving God who cares for his people. A gospel who, that, that will heal uh, the sick, uh, who would raise the dead, who would touch the leper, who would hang out with criminals, who would allow prostitutes to wash their feet. This gospel, no matter what your station is in life, Jesus loves you. And while you are listening to this word, I pray and trust that you truly understand it. Just because you come to church don't mean that you believe it. You are looking for something. You are hoping that something is going to change. And, and it seems the harder you work, the more you pray, the more difficult it becomes. And the farther hope is from you. But I'm here to tell you that that's nothing more than a scam from the devil. He is trying to make you think that you are not worthy. But I'm here to tell you that this gospel, the good news that Jesus has come, and it doesn't matter what your shape or condition is he's gonna love you and he will save you doesn't matter what you are doing in by day or by night he can forgive you he will pick you up when you fall he will stand by you when everybody leaves your side he will go with you when nobody else wants to go my God and so I say to you today. This gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. Having come not just to the world. But come into my heart because I need him there. That, that's good news. I, I was on the brink of committing suicide but something distracted me this gospel the good news that Jesus loves you wherever you are this gospel of a caring Lord shall be preached this is the news the world needs now. The thousands of people who've been affected by this COVID-19 need some hope. They need to know that God has not forsaken them. They need to know that God still loves them. They need to know that this Jesus is not a man of history, but he's a man of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. As you have 
sat through to listen to this word today, I pray that the spirit of the living God has touched you and moved upon your heart to help you to understand that Jesus came, he put everything on the line to serve, to help, to bless, to heal, to comfort his people. While you are sitting or standing or whatever you're doing in your home or wherever you are, I want to ask you to bow your head with me as the words this gospel I hope that you understand what that gospel is what that good news is that good news is, is that Jesus still saves Jesus is alive we just celebrated just a few days ago the resurrection of our Lord he is alive he has not left us here alone in the sin sick world to perish by ourselves he has not turned off the light in the room he is the light and now is an opportunity for you to accept him as your personal savior to let him come into your experience and help you with some of your challenges that you might be having. Yeah, I know the government said, well, don't worry about the rent because of the situation we're in. But God will provide when it doesn't look like man has anything to provide. That's why you need to turn to Jesus now. This is why we have this opportunity this, this thing is not really about the COVID-19. It's really about you getting your house in order. Because as Jesus told the disciples, this world is about to come to an end. And I'm about to make some changes. And I want your life to be one of those changes if you would just let me in. This gospel? Yeah. The love that you need to show to your brother, your sister. The love you need to show to your husband or your wife, your children, your friends, your neighbors. Now is the time for us to fix what's broken. And this gospel? Yeah. good news of my exodus yes I have left a world of sin and I'm now free as I walk through the divided waters of my circumstances this gospel my Jericho walls are coming down because I'm putting my trust in God this gospel even though I have cheated on God even though I have not been faithful to God he still loves me like the popular songwriter said some years ago this is what God says to us I know you want to leave me but I refuse to let you go my brothers and my sisters, don't, don't think that this time is just idle or it's boring time or there's not much to do. If you have not made your calling and your election sure, we have a lot of work to do. Spend more time saying loving things. Spend more time caring and sharing. Spend more time thinking of the wonderful things you can do when we come through this. When we come out of this, and we will, how will you look? How will you be?
your heads are bowed. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for the prophecies. Thank you for coming to show us how to live. Thank you for loving us when we didn't have sense enough to love ourselves. Thank you for caring for us. And even in the midst of this, though some of us have experienced the tragic loss of loved ones, oh God, we know that you still love us because we know that death does not have the final word. You said you're going to come and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then those of us who are alive and see you coming are going to be caught up. Then you said, after the thousand years is over, you're going to come back and you're going to destroy sin, death, and Satan. And so we take hope and trust and know that your word is true. And we will cling to this gospel until we see your face. In Jesus' name, amen. What a mighty and tremendous God who knows exactly what we need mighty God who sends who we need. I hope you were blessed today by the message. What a powerful message from on high. What a, what a powerful message from this God. And we just thank him for allowing Pastor Ron Edmonds to be with us today. Listen, you've been studying and you've been hearing things that you haven't heard before. You've been faith in your imagination and your heart has been touched and we want to be able to continue that continue to reach out and touch you if you have a bible in your home you are able to follow along as you did today it's there the hope is there uh, we also have for those who want to continue the hope uh, we have a couple little books that we have uh, they're yours you have to let us know who you are if you let us know who you are uh, we'll send the books to you absolutely free. Get them in the mail to you uh, so that you can continue to study this word and be blessed. Uh, and join us again here. We'll be back at this station on Wednesday evening. We ask you to join us for our prayer meeting and ask you to be a part of us. We thank you once again for being here today ask you to stay with on the phone line that we've given for our spiritual growth this afternoon at 4 p.m. and be blessed in Jesus name. God bless you and have a wonderful week. Praise God.